Thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. I'm going to talk about nuts, obesity, and cardiometabolic risk factors. And I'm going to start by talking about the prevalence of cardiometabolic disease globally. And then I'm going to focus specifically on nuts and cardiometabolic disease risk factors. And you're all aware of those. Metabolic syndrome in particular, waist circumference, triglycerides, glucose, HDL, and blood pressure. And I'm going to focus mainly on reviews that have looked at how nuts affect these uh, cardiometabolic risk factors. Um, and then um, talk a little bit about nuts and body weight. And if we have time, I'll talk about nuts and cardiometabolic research that's been conducted at Penn State and then sum it up. Well, we all know about metabolic syndrome. Uh, a key cause is excess calories and a poor diet, along with sedentary lifestyle, leading to obesity, and in particular, abdominal obesity. And we know the consequences associated with that. Uh, we're so concerned about these because uh, metabolic syndrome markedly increases risk for cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, as well as some cancers. Well, there are many different criteria for metabolic syndrome. Uh, a lot of them are quite similar, but I think a distinguishing shared characteristic is obesity and abdominal obesity. And then beyond that, there are various nuances for factors like um, blood glucose levels. But I think it's just important to pay attention to the fact that there are a lot of different criteria there are a lot of different groups that have their own criteria, and as such, that creates a little bit of a difference in the prevalence uh, worldwide. And you can see the prevalence according to NCEP ATP3 criteria versus um, IDF criteria. And I think, well, we're all aware of the fact that metabolic syndrome is prevalent across the world. And what you see here is, is that on this slide, in these countries, <clears throat> the prevalence is anywhere from 5.2% in South Korea all the way up to almost 49% in men in the United States. Recently, um, the Heart, American Heart Association heart and stroke statistics were published, and they covered the topic of metabolic syndrome and according to uh, Amelia Benjamin, metabolic syndrome is becoming a hyperendemic uh, problem around the world. You can see what the prevalence is uh, in various countries. In the BioShare U report for seven countries, we see that among the obese population, the prevalence is between 24 to 65% for females and 43 to 78% for males. So this really portends um, a very risky future in terms of you know, the diseases that um, people suffer with metabolic syndrome, as a result of metabolic syndrome. Uh, what we do know is that metabolic syndrome increases with age, and you can see here uh, from uh, a study done in the United States that um, it's highest in ages 60 and above, but be, and that's you know overall for both males and females for different races and ethnic groups. But beyond that, I don't want to downplay the significance of you know metabolic syndrome uh, at all ages, and we're even seeing it now in a lot of children worldwide. So it's a very significant problem. So now let's turn our attention to nuts and cardiometabolic disease risk and risk factors. Um, <clears throat> so this is a, an interesting article that was published in Nutrition Reviews recently. And you can see um, the evidence grades for diets uh, and metabolic syndrome. And you can see that um, a Mediterranean diet with or without energy restriction can be recommended for all people with metabolic syndrome as an effective component of the treatment strategy. And uh, B-level grade evidence. 
And you can see that it's not just the Mediterranean diet, but other healthy diets as well are effective in, in treating and preventing metabolic syndrome, like the DASH diet, the new Nordic diet, and plant-based vegetarian diets can also be recommended for people with metabolic syndrome. So in terms of healthy versus unhealthy diets and metabolic syndrome, what we see is uh, basically from uh, an analysis of 28 cross-sectional studies um, that uh, a prudent, healthy diet decreases risk of metabolic syndrome 28%. A Western-style diet, on the other hand, increases risk of metabolic syndrome about 28%. So a healthy dietary pattern, I think, is the basis for both prevention and treatment of metabolic syndrome. So now let's look specifically at nuts, because nuts are a component of a healthy dietary pattern. I'm going to start by talking about cross-sectional studies done across the world. The first one, actually done in Croatia, basically showed that... Um, People who eat nuts even once a month compared to those who eat nuts infrequently have a 20% reduced risk of metabolic syndrome. And then uh, other studies done in the United States and then in Spain uh, basically show uh, anywhere between you know, a 20 and 35% reduction in risk of metabolic syndrome with nut consumption. And in Spain, higher amounts of nut consumption, three servings a week, uh, compared with less than one serving a week, can lower risk of metabolic syndrome by 35%. In terms of longitudinal studies done across the world, uh, one done in Iran, another one done in Spain, uh, anywhere from a 23% reduction to a 35% reduction uh, with just uh, greater than or and equal to two servings a week of nuts. Pretty, remar pretty strong benefits of nut consumption on uh, the risk of metabolic syndrome. And this is worldwide. And we're seeing this in cross-sectional studies uh, as well as longitudinal studies. So let's turn our attention now to PREDIMED. I think you're going to hear a lot about PREDIMED um, at this meeting. Um, PREDIMED, um, this is a seminal study on the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease with a Mediterranean diet supplemented with extra virgin olive oils or nuts. And I'm going to focus on cardiometabolic risk factors specifically. So um, as you know, this was a study done uh, in Spain, uh, very high risk individuals between the ages of 55 and 80 who were randomized to one of three treatment diets, Mediterranean diet with olive oil, Mediterranean diet with nuts, or a controlled lower fat diet group. And uh, the nut group consumed 30 grams of nuts per day, uh, 50 grams per day of walnuts, 7.5 grams per day of almonds, and 7.5 grams per day of hazelnuts. Uh, people on the olive oil diet consumed 50 grams per day. And what did they see in terms of metabolic syndrome? Well, in terms of um, the two Mediterranean diets, uh, the one with extra virgin olive oil and then one with nuts, both of these caused a reversion in metabolic syndrome who, in subjects who had metabolic syndrome at the start. Uh, interestingly, there was a decrease, a reversion in central obesity on the two metabolic, on the two Mediterranean diet studies or uh, treatments, uh, including the nut treatment group. And uh, what we see here is also there was uh, a decrease in blood glucose, uh, a reversion in blood glucose from METSIN criteria to no METSIN criteria in the olive oil group and a trend here in the nut group. So what we're seeing is in this controlled clinical trial, a uh, reversion of medicine uh, in the Mediterranean diet groups and in the nut group in particular. So what happened to body weight? Well, uh, we know that nuts are calorically dense, as is olive oil, but in the three treatment groups, there's actually a decrease in body weight um, in, in all of them. That was not significant between the groups. 
But interestingly, in terms of waist circumference, um, we do know that there is an increase in weight, waist circumference as we grow older. And this was pretty much seen in, in the treatment groups. But interestingly, in the nut group and the olive oil group, there wasn't the same increase in waist circumference as there was in the lower fat diet group. So now we're seeing benefits of the, med uh, the Mediterranean diet and specifically uh, the one with olive oil and also the one with nuts on age-related increases in waist circumference, an important criteria for metabolic syndrome. Okay, so now let's look at the effect of nuts on metabolic syndrome criteria. And as I said, I'm going to talk about um, meta-analyses and review papers. And this is a very good one done by uh, people, authors who are here, David Jenkins, Cyril Kendall, and John Sivenpiper. Um, you can see that they analyzed 49 uh, randomized control trials that uh, looked at waist circumference, triglycerides, HDL, blood pressure, and fasting blood glucose. And you can see that the pooled analysis of over 2,200 participants showed uh, benefits of tree nuts uh, basically on triglycerides and fasting blood glucose levels. But importantly, no adverse effects on other metabolic syndrome criteria. So here are two slides from their study, and you can see benefits here on blood glucose of the Mediterranean diet and benefits as well on triglycerides of the Mediterranean diet. And interestingly, you know, a lot of studies are evaluated here and a lot of subjects. So these are all RCTs. And so um, Amelia Ross wrote a really good review paper in British Journal of Nutrition in 2015 looking at epidemiologic evidence and RCT evidence on MET-SYN criteria and nut consumption. And what did he show? Well, you can see, let's focus on RCT evidence and basically uh, benefits on a lot of MET-SYN criteria, HDL cholesterol, an increase or no change, triglycerides, a decrease, blood pressure, a decrease, visceral adiposity, also a decrease. So clear benefits of nut consumption on important criteria for metabolic syndrome. Okay, let's turn our attention now to nuts and body weight. This is a really interesting literature, and so I've just picked out a few important studies to show you. Um, this is a study that was published in New England Journal of Medicine, and the data come from Nurses Health Study, uh, the Nurses Health Study 2, and the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study. And over a period of four years, the investigators looked at weight changes. And they looked at food and beverage consumption related to weight change over four years. And you can see that certain foods are associated with an increase in body weight over a four-year period, potato chips, uh, fries, processed meats, um, red meats, butter. But there are certain, certain foods that are associated with a decrease in body weight, and in particular, nuts is one of them. Others, you know, include whole grains, fruits, and yogurt. Now, another study uh, was published looking specifically on nut consumption and body weight and obesity uh, from these three cohorts. And basically, over a four-year period, uh, people who consumed nuts compared with people who didn't had uh, a decrease in body weight of about 0.26 kilograms. Okay, so clear benefits of nut consumption on age-related weight gain. People who were eating nuts actually lost weight over a four-year period. Very significant finding. So... Um, this is a study that um, actually came out of New Zealand. So uh, I thought this was really interesting. And it's from the 208 to 209 New Zealand Adult Nutrition Survey. And you can see it's a survey of about 4,500 individuals looking at 
nut consumers versus nut consumers. And in terms of cardiometabolic risk factors, uh, the nut consumers had a lower body weight. And this is quite significant. Uh, by two kilograms, a lower BMI. I think that's really amazing. By 2.3 units and uh, a lower waist circumference compared to non-nut consumers. Okay, so it looks like I have three minutes. Okay. Um, and then um, uh, Jordy and his colleagues, Amelia Ross, did uh, a meta-analysis of 33 clinical trials looking at nut intake and adiposity and uh, basically saw benefits on body weight, BMI, and waist circumference. So collectively, we're seeing that all of the data show benefits on multiple cardiometabolic risk factors, but um, adiposity as well. And remember, adiposity is sort of uh, the common factor in terms of explaining uh, metabolic syndrome. So just real quickly, effects of daily almond consumption on cardiometabolic risk factors in individuals with elevated LDL cholesterol and body composition. So I'm going to just give you the highlights of two studies that we've conducted at Penn State. And our hypothesis was that incorporating 1.5 ounces of almonds per day would decrease abdominal adiposity compared with um, a muffin that's lower in fat. So this was a two-period crossover study, and people either consumed almonds or um, a caloric equivalent muffin per day. And there were, here are the differences in the diet. Uh, the almond diet was higher in fat. The control diet was low in fat. Uh, both were controlled for saturated fat. And uh, we looked at body composition using DEXA technology. And uh, basically, all of the diets uh, decreased body weight, body fat, and lean mass a little bit, but the almond diet decreased uh, central mass, central, total central mass, central fat mass, and also central lean mass compared to the low fat diet. We also saw a decrease in waist circumference on the almond diet compared with the low fat diet. So almonds have a beneficial effect compared to a lower fat diet on subregional body composition, decreasing abdominal adiposity and waist circumference. And then uh, a, a walnut study that we just reported on at ASN about a month ago. Uh, the major hypothesis I want to talk about is that replacement of saturated fat with PUFAs, specifically ALA and walnuts, will provide greater benefits in central blood pressure and other markers of cardiovascular risk than replacing SATs with MUFA. So uh, we had three different treatment diets here after a run-in, and they were all given for six weeks. And here are the diets. A walnut diet, a control diet uh, that didn't have any walnuts, but that was matched uh, in terms of macronutrients, and then a diet where uh, oleic acid was substituted for alpha-linolenic acid. All these diets were low in saturated fat. And uh, the key finding here is that you can see the walnut diet benefited uh, brachial mean arterial pressure. It benefited central diastolic blood pressure compared with the higher oleic acid diet. And it benefited uh, central mean arterial pressure compared with the other two treatments, compared to baseline. So the walnut diet benefited measures of artery health. So in summary, um, cardiometabolic disease is an epidemic globally, but nut consumption and a healthy dietary pattern decrease cardiometabolic disease and the defining criteria. It's not associated with obesity, nut consumption that is, and in fact it decreases risk of overweight and obesity. And so, as such, we have a lot of recommendations to increase consumption of nuts for cardiometabolic health. And I think the challenge that we all face is how do we get people to eat more nuts in the context of a healthy diet? So in conclusion, enjoy nuts for cardiometabolic health, and I thank you very much for your attention.